Hello YouTube and welcome to the fake Merc character study part 19. It's been a minute since I've made an episode but I think you'll find that the wait was worth it because today I'm finally going to cover a topic that has been lurking in the background for the entirety of the series and that is Bloho's sexuality. I've made innuendos and certain you know allegations towards the potential homosexuality of his so today I think it's only fair that I lay the cards on the table and I give you everything I found that points towards him potentially actually liking men. I want to preface that by saying that of course I have nothing against gay men or gay women or whoever but I still believe that in the case of Bloho it's interesting to actually explore this topic in particular because he himself is a massive homophobe. And therefore, it would be quite interesting to be able to actually reveal that he was gay all along. So let's see what I found. I want to also warn anyone with a weak heart that this episode is going to be particularly vile because some of the stuff I found is truly disgusting. So you watch this at your own risk. But for all of the men's addicts out there, this is what you've been waiting for. So let's get into it. And just to quickly explain again why it took me so long to uh, get this episode out. Last time it was because Bloho apologized. This time it's different. It's just that I feel like I have actually fulfilled my goal with these episodes and that was to fuck him up as much as possible. Meaning that if you look at his channel now and the state of his clientele, well, he's doing terrible. He has 100k subs and he can only get a thousand views per video and that's if he's lucky. So my goal of destroying his outreach on YouTube has functioned perfectly. Now, of course, it's not just because of me, other people helped. And it's also because as I predicted, the shift in within YouTube of removing the dislike actually fucked him up the ass, meaning that he was better off when people could dislike his shit because at least he got the views. Now all of the hate watching is gone and he has finally realized that no one actually watches him. So that is done. He will never make a comeback on YouTube. It's impossible because he's being weighted down by the tens of thousands of fake subscribers he purchased from India because this idiot still hasn't realized that any subscriber that doesn't watch your content kills your actual power within the algorithm. But because he's too attached to a 100k sub number, even though it means absolutely jack shit, he will never give it up. So I know that he'll never actually rebound and he'll never be big again. And for the clients, as I've verified, I've gotten rid of most of his teenage clientele and the only few remaining are retards, meaning that I cannot get to them. I've tried, I've had back and forth exchanges with some of the people which are grown adults that pay this dumbass 250 bucks a month to be coughed by someone with no title that has never actually won a, comp uh, a competitive powerlifting competition and who looks like shit, but they still will not listen to me. So I give up. If they want to actually pay that guy so that he can continuously stuff his jowls with shitty Walmart food, that is their prerogative. So anytime I actually make an installment now, it's going to just be for the men's and for the enjoyment. But there is always the underlining current of trying to piece off Bloho. And in this case, two events actually made me want to release the episode today. The first one is that for some reason, Bloho decided to create a new batch of sock accounts with only female names and he spammed my videos with them. So I don't know if you're itching for a beating Bloho, if you enjoy being spanked to that level that you wanted me to go to come back. So there I am. That is back. I guess that's what you wanted. And then the second one, a little bit funnier, is that I had to deal with someone in my life who was very similar to Bloho recently, to the point that he looked like a clone. He was similar in build, he was also going bold, but refused to admit it. And it was a good, uh, a fun game to actually point it out and say, hey, you're losing your hair, bro. And the guy was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not bold. It's just, I have thin hair. It was the exact same excuse. And... The more I spoke to that dude, the more connected he got to Blow to the point that I thought at some point that I might have found his twin. The guy told me that he used to be a sniper in the US military, that he was one of the people that helped create the CIA, even though he was in his 40s, that he was the best sniper in the world and that he could take on a team of 100 Navy SEALs with one sniper. 
by himself. He could fuck them up just with only a select amount of bullets. He also told me that he was a descendant of the Da Vinci's, which is like reptilian overlord bullshit that blew who would spout, pretending to descend from a very famous person so that you can get some social clout. But the dude looked like a complete bum. So, I mean, if he is a Da Vinci, how far the mighty has fallen, right? And it went on and on. He told me that he owned the entirety of the railways in India, that he had billions of dollars, but the guy was dressed in what just looked like clothes that he found on the street. It was mind-blowing. But it just, it, the demon in me was awoken because I made fun of that guy for an afternoon. It was great. But then I left and it wasn't enough. My appetite had been triggered. And so I'm going to have to go after the only lol cow that I know can give me enough milk to actually satiate me. And that's old boy Hemingway with his big old titties. So that's the reason why you're getting this episode today. You can thank the dude that I met who was also actually addicted to meth, which made me think that maybe that's why Broho is losing his teeth. Maybe he's also addicted to meth. That would explain it. But it's too expensive. And on top of that, we both know that Piggy is more of a sweet tooth kind of guy. He stuffs his face with Twinkies. So it's not really crystal meth he's after. It's more sugary bullshit. All right. With this introduction out of the way, let's dwell into the topic of Bloho's potential homosexuality. Today is going to be a tale of a deeply closeted man and also some juicy meta Bloho vs. drama because a lot of things happen behind the scenes and I'm finally going to be able to share it with you guys. There has been a war, a shadow war, a war that involved mercenaries that were paid in equipment and not money so that you could never trace us and we could dust our tracks and leave no alibi behind. A war that didn't shed any blood, but a war that shed many, many men. I'll get into that when we get to that point. First, let's start with what I promised, the potential homosexuality of Jason Bloho Blaino Blue Blue. First off, I want to say, as I already presented, that he's homophobic, meaning that I'm not talking about a dude who's against gay marriage or who doesn't want to shake a gay man's hand. Like, whoa, whoa way past the point of surface level homophobia or what could potentially be considered as such. Here, we have a guy who on Discord openly said to complete random teenagers he didn't even know that he believed that homosexuals were abominations of nature and that they needed to be burned at the stake. We are at this level of outward hatred towards this group of people. You also, if you have followed the many videos he made about other YouTubers, realize that his favorite insult is to call people gay. But he doesn't just call them gay. He likes to find them cute nicknames that he then sticks to with all of the fervor of an autistic child and that he repeats consistently to the point that it becomes creepy, creepy after a while. Uh, we can cite, for example, Alpha Destiny that he renamed Strap and Destiny something that you will come to find out is prophetic and also a bit concerning for Alex. Uh, you have Jeff Nippard that was renamed Jeff Nipples. You have Kino Body that was named Kino Booty. The list goes on and on and on. Every single time Bloho had a feud with someone, he always found a way to present them as being gay. If that is not projection, I don't know what is because it's like the old saying, if everywhere you go, it smells like shit, check under your shoe. Well, if ever you go, people are gay, maybe check in your pants. Maybe you're the one who has a little bit of an affinity with the male sexual organ and you're just projecting that onto others. It was particularly blatant back in those days because it was non-stop. Remember that he also called Nick strength and power gay to the level that he actually started an entire conspiracy theory that Nick's strength and power actually had a boyfriend it was during a period of time where I think Nick broke up with his girlfriend and Blue went and said that it was not the case, that actually the boyfriend was a girlfriend. So that is concerning, right? It, it goes beyond the reptilian overload shit or the guy that I met that was a descendant of the Da Vinci. Now Bloho is starting to invent lives for other people. He, he started saying that a big YouTuber had this entire secret life of being a closeted homosexual. Again, that sounds like projection to me. That sounds like something that Bloho experienced. And he actually said that other people that he hated were doing that. But it started a trend, a trend that uh, was 
very widespread of calling other YouTubers fags, essentially, and also going with the nicknames. That correlated with the non-stop bragging of Bloho about his sexual price with women is the sign of someone who is trying to convince others that he actually doesn't like men. I knew a guy like this in high school where with me and my clique, of course, we would look at girls and I wasn't particularly interested back then, but some, some of my boys were actually quite like interested in the topic and so they would talk about girls' ass, girls' boobs, whatever. It was like teenage boy talk. And I had one friend who felt the need to participate, but it was so over the top and so clearly disconnected with what he really felt that it was blatant. He was just saying that so that we wouldn't know he was gay. Saying stuff like, oh, yes, look at the massive breast tissue on this one. I wish I could suckle on this magnificent nipple garbage. Like, it was that level of shit. When you listen to Bloho, don't you get the same feeling of someone who doesn't really like women, but understands that to keep up the macho persona, he has to continuously be that alpha male that gets chicks. So once in a while, he just reminds people he has sex with women. And he does it again in the most robotic way. Like when people on his channel ask him that if he was doing no fap or not, he answered, no, I actually broke it this morning with a female. What heterosexual male would need to precise that he just had sex with a woman? No one. It should be a given. But if you actually like dudes, it's something that you're going to do subconsciously because you yourself know that it's not true. So you want to make sure that you double down on the fact that it's actually a girl and that you weren't in bed with Jamal. It goes further than that, though, because you will see that we might even question the very species of person or things that Blo apparently broke NoFap with. Most likely it was his right hand, but a little bit of tease going on here, it might actually have been with an animal. So that is for the closeted aspect of his personality that then connects, of course, to the fact that he claims to have dozens of threesomes, which no one does. And also it sounds so unrealistic that only someone who doesn't actually like women would spout. He's also a big hypocrite and this is when some of the potential disgust he has towards women transpires because it's an old buried man, but some of you might remember that there used to be a guy whose name I don't remember, who was a powerlifter at the time. I think his name was also Nick, I believe. And that guy had a girlfriend and that girlfriend posted on Instagram a picture of her kissing another chick. And Bloho had a complete meltdown, meaning that he made a full video explaining how it was disgusting and how a real man would never allow that, which also then transformed into the guy apparently being gay because he allowed his woman to kiss another woman, keeping in mind that this comes from a man whose girlfriend was a stripper and got gang banged by 12 black dudes at some point. These are things I'm going to also cover in later installments. But that was a video that Bloho made. The same Bloho who also claims to have threesomes. So which one is it? Do you fuck random chicks all the time? Or do you think it's disgusting to engage in like threesomes or foursomes? You have to pick. And I think that the pick is easy. You just have to see how passionate he was in that video, railing against uh, what can only be considered a, an innocent kiss, while at the same time also trying to pretend that he isn't in full bloom desire of engaging in that type of homosexual relationship. And when it comes to bodybuilding, that's also becoming evident because a large portion of his content is making fun of bodybuilding, but it's not making fun of it because it's dangerous or because it might not have the, the correct standards. No, he makes fun of it from the perspective of it's gay. That's most of his points. When he discusses bodybuilding, it's gay. And why is it gay? Well, because it's a bunch of dudes who are all up on stage and who flex their muscles. I have heard this argument coming from people that were not blow, actually, it's very widespread. And I always get the same sense from these guys. That sense is that if you think that a guy on stage in a thong flexing is gay, isn't that because you, are, you have feelings towards that? Isn't that that you watch this and something happens in your pants and you try to repress that so you point the finger at them and you blame them for the way you feel? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just bros on the stage flexing it's not sexual. Some people see it sexually, but I guarantee you that the guys on stage don't. Most bodybuilders don't, even though there's a lot of homosexuality within bodybuilding. And that is why Bloho fits right in. Bloho actually is very interested in that type of lifestyle. 
but he will never admit it to himself, so he points the finger. That comes from a man who covered himself in baby oil to shoot videos. So apparently, putting oil on your body to pose is gay, but just rubbing yourself with olive oil like a stuffed turkey and then just prancing in your apartment in booty shorts for the camera, that's not gay. Explain to me the double standard here. Keep in mind also that the reason why he covered himself in baby oil is because people kept pointing out the fact that he never sweats. Because of course he trains like a bitch, so he never does high reps, he never actually has to catch his breath, so he never sweats, even though he's obese. So what does he do? Instead of actually training hard, what does Bloho do? He goes to the closest store, he uses his welfare stamps, and he buys baby oil. Can you imagine the, the distress of the cashier that had to ring up Bloho's order for that day? The guy most likely showed up with Skittles, baby oil, and cucumbers the size of my arm, and you're supposed to keep a straight face, while this guy who is clearly up to no good is leaving the store with these ingredients. Thankfully, he didn't use them for any malevolent purpose. He just, again, covered himself. I mean, the action of taking baby oil and putting it on yourself should... It, it should land you a felony charge. Because you're already strange. Like, you're a single man in your 40s in a single bedroom apartment rubbing yourself in baby oil half naked. And then again, doing it for the camera in booty shorts. Let's talk about these booty shorts. These are the gayest piece of clothing I have ever seen in my life. If you wore this at the gay pride, you'd have dudes in, in you know, those pants with, with no ass, like there's, a, there's actually a hole for your ass so that people can slap it. Even these guys would call you a fag if you wore these, these booty shorts at the parade. They are horrendous. It's insane that he even thought it was a good idea to wear this, but he did it for like a year and a half. And if I'm not mistaken, they make apparitions here and there. I don't know why he thought it was a good idea, but he wore them. And that is not straight in my book. Only someone who's a little bit fruity who actually do something like this. Now, the story with the underpants is going to continue. I am deeply sorry for anyone who is going to have to listen to it. It's menti as fuck, but it's also disgusting. You will see that the booty short is actually the last of her worries, because this constant worry about aesthetics that he says is gay is very present in his videos as well. Because apparently when other men do it, it's gay, but when he shaves his entire body and just keeps some remnants of chest hair, that's okay. And then he eats in front of the camera something that he refused to do for years because he claimed it was gay for pay. So in his understanding, when you eat in front of a camera, it's gay, but covering yourself up in baby oil and bending over so that the camera and the audience can see your crotch in booty shorts isn't gay. Again, I want someone to sit down and explain that to me. It makes no sense. But, Lo, you are correct. When you eat completely naked with that word porno, like 80s porno lighting, and you just stuff your face with rice, yeah, that is super gay. And I mean gay in the sense of stupid, because I don't know any gay man who would actually get off to that. The only people that watch it are people who are there to make fun of you, because you look like an overweight pelican. It is truly disgusting. You need to start, start chewing your food before you swallow it. Now, uh, with the body shaving and the aesthetic appeal also comes the question of the cuts. Because Bloho hates bodybuilding, but he's also the YouTuber that has done the most amount of cuts. I have never seen a man try to appeal to an audience that he apparently believes is a bunch of homosexuals. And in this sense, he's still back to his, his old tricks because he's trying to cut right now. I don't think he understands that it's never going to work because when he cuts, he looks like an emaciated bear and then when he just bulks up, he looks obese. It's like a purgatory of sort. There is no out. But the endless cut is also a proof that he does care about the aesthetic value of his body, which is also the reason why his vids are so homoerotic. And that's coming from a guy who shoots shirtless most times and sometimes without pants also. But let's continue. Because even though I try to do some detective work and uh, try to actually find him on gay websites and see if I could actually find proof that he was engaging in that, that type of relationship, I found nothing. Or at least I didn't find him. I found a bunch of you guys trying to, pretending to be him. Meaning that I found a bunch of fake accounts, which 
is funny, but also a little bit distracting because I had to make sure every time it was him and it was never him. It was always one of you guys. So I don't know if he actually does that or not. He might actually have the ability to cover his tracks when it comes to stuff like this. But in the past, he wasn't so discreet. We have pictures of him, two in particular, that are dead giveaways that this guy might actually swing the other way. And the first one is the bear picture. Now, just by saying that, I know that I'm giving PTSD attacks to some of you because you remember that picture. It's a picture taken with a downright angle of Broho, fully naked, wearing a bear onesie. You know those things that, that little kids wear or, or women wear? With, like it's a Pikachu onesie or a Panda onesie. This one was like a bear. And it was open here so you could see his titties. And he's staring up at the camera with like the most dick, guzzling look I've ever seen in my life. Like, as we say in French, ses yeux pue la bite. Like, his eyes reek of dung. I, I really encourage you to not seek that picture because it's traumatizing, but I can only surmise that he had taken that picture to use on a website to meet other men. Because if not, what is the point? Explain to me the reasoning behind a 40-year-old man donning a bare onesie and then taking a picture trying to look cute. You're not going to use it for Instagram. You're supposed to be a lifter. You're not going to send it to women. Women will never respond to that. The only potential purpose of such a picture is other men. So I think that this was actually something that he did. And then to follow up on the hilariousness, we also have the picture of Blo taking a nap. And so first off, it's a picture that his girlfriend took, very weird, that was posted on Instagram of all places, well, you see our boy Hemingway laying with a blanket on him, like a baby, and underneath the blanket, you see something that looks like a, like a massive 12 inch, inch dong, which we all know doesn't belong to him. So it alarmed people because there was a lot of questions like, what happened? Why is there a dick that doesn't belong to you underneath your blanket? Plus, he positioned it to make it look as, it, as, it, as if it were his dick. So it was an elaborate plan of a man, again, in his 40s, who told his girlfriend one morning, hey, I'm going to lay down with a blanket on me and I'm going to take a fake penis and I'm going to place it near my leg so that people who watch the picture think that it's my actual dick. Can you take a picture of me? A normal woman should say yes and then when you turn around, they smash a beer bottle on your head and they jump out the window. In this case, Moon Cookie actually said, okay, she gave the green light for that stuff and Blue who did it. Picture someone who says apparently that he's an alpha male laying down with a blanket, then positioning a dildo near his leg, putting the blanket on top and closing his eyes and being like this, pretending to sleep for the picture. It's terrifying, but it goes even beyond that because that picture again was taken to flex. Broho truly thought that we're going to believe that was a candid picture of him sleeping with a, a, a gigantic dick. There's no other way to go around it. No, the actual question is, why did he have a dildo in the first place? How did he get that, that, that prosthesis of a dick? Well, the answer might not surprise you because you might think that it actually belongs to the girlfriend, to Moon Cookie, but that's not the case. Actually, that stuff, that thing belonged to Bloho. It was actually owned by him. And that is when we introduce a character that I never thought in a million years would make its apparition in this series. And that is the purple dildo. The purple dildo is a very important person in this entire Bloho verse because it's essentially Bloho's romantic partner. Like all of the girlfriend he had before, they don't really amount for nothing because the real love making happens underneath the blankets between him, Bloho, and the dildo. So let's get into this disgusting story, but because I'm dying of cold, I am going to put on a hoodie. A hoodie that you will see is prophetic because on the front of the hoodie is two things that uh, Bro is passionate about, one that he actually is passionate about, and the other one that he pretends to be passionate about. So as you can see, it's a West Side hoodie, and that is the powerlifting aspect of the thing, which we all know Bro is not really into at all, it's just a LARP. And then you have this, a dog. You will see again why it's relevant later. Now, to discuss the dildo, 
and it, it, the existence of this thing in the first place. Because I know that you've been watching this series for a while, so you're used to the wild amount of shit that Broho did, but nothing could prepare you to what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to introduce the purple dildo into the equation, no pun intended. But before we do that, before we get into this topic, I also have to mention a few additional pictures that you might find very juicy. The first one is the Sparta costume picture. There was a period of time where, for some, some reason, Bro decided that it would be a good move to start wearing a Sparta costume in his videos. And we're not talking about a good Sparta costume. We're not talking about something that, you know, could actually resemble what a warrior would don for the battlefield. No, it was like a dress that stopped like here, like just, just, just underneath his dick and balls that was like made of velour, like something very soft and sultry, like something that like a 60 year old maiden would wear to who her pen pal from World War II that he wore on camera and stood up wearing, meaning that this disgusting pig actually stood up to reveal the cottage cheese that he calls legs to show off his muscular legs, which was horrifying. And thank God we never got an upskirt because it really well could have happened. Again, that thing looked like a mini skirt. I don't know where he bought it, but it, it truly looks like something that he went to a, a random costume store and purchased without realizing that he was actually purchasing a dress. Like, he was dressing up as Snow White without realizing that it wasn't a Spartan costume at all, which is paradoxical because if he is Snow White, he should have played one of the dwarves. It would have made much more sense. So that was for Sparta. Again, keep in mind, he thought that the Spartan costume made him look cool. And he reiterated recently with the cape, bro, you have to stop with the LARPing. You're not a superhero. And if you were, the type of costumes that you were is like super prostitutes. You can wear that and then wait on the side of the road and get clients. But when it comes to actually fighting on the battlefield, I mean, keep in mind, bro, that back in the days of the Spartans, you would have been one of those kids tossed from atop the cliff. They would have taken one look at you at birth and thought, okay, this is a fuck up. We'll make a new one. You know, like you'll have been, been fed to the seagulls. Or if you actually made it to old age, you would have been the guy from the 300 movie, like the hunchback that betrays everyone. That's you, bro. You're not a Spartan. Leonidas would have taken one look at you and Sparta kicked you into the ground. So that's for this one. Then we have the panties one. This one is a doozy too. Bro is incapable of editing his videos. He's been making videos for five, six years now, and they'll never edit it because he's completely incapable of using technology. So in one of his videos, he forgot that at some point he stood up. It's one of his videos where he only films with the desk and you can only see the top, thank God, which revealed that actually when he does these videos, he's not wearing any pants. It's the reason why I made that joke about me not wearing pants. In my case, it's sarcasm because I would never do that on camera, but he actually did it. Meaning that when he shot videos, he was wearing panties. And I mean panties, not underwear, not boxer shorts, blue panties, women panties. And you can, you can see that because again, in that video that he didn't edit out, he stands up and you see it on his body. It's like a, yeah, it's like something that a chick would wear. It's insane because if I tell you that and you've never seen the video, you would think that I'm exaggerating. But people in the comment will confirm that is something. It exists. The video is out there. The pictures are out there. And I have, I have a sneaking suspicion that these blue panties were actually owned by a woman at some point and he stole them. I think he stole them from one of his wives and he keeps wearing them, I don't know, as a trophy, as a souvenir, or just because he likes to cross dress, who knows. But it happened. We also have the carrot dick picture that I like to call this way because it's a picture again that Bruho took because he thought it made him look big and it's one that you've seen before with his dick in the shot and I'm not kidding you, his dick is like this. It's like a thumb. Like it's like a thumb poking out of his underwears and the carrot dick. It looks like a baby carrot. And actually Moon Cookie confirmed that he had a small dick. So now we have uh, the ability to know what Bloho's junk looks like. Thank you very much, Jason, for imposing such abominations on us. But we're just getting started with the abominations, because let's get back to the topic of dildos. Even though Bloho packs a mini sneaker in his package, we see that he tends to have a taste and gravitate towards BBCs. 
So when it comes to that dildo, it has a very long history. It didn't just make its apparition underneath the blanket. It was there before. Like, it's not like he bought a dildo to put it underneath the blanket to pretend to have a big dick. He bought it before for another purpose. And that purpose was, and I quote, to massage his prostate. Yes, we are getting to the disgusting part. So Bloho, back in the days on forearms, admitted that he actually liked to put dildos up his asshole. And one of the dildos he would use was the purple dildo from that shot. Look at the pinned comments that I'm putting in the, in, uh, in the comment section. All of the posts are here. It is 100% him from back in the days discussing his perversion with other people on the bodybuilding forum. I thought bodybuilding was gay, bloho. You know what's really fucking gay? Discussing the, discussing the fact that you put, up, you put things up your asshole on the bodybuilding forum. That's the gay part. It's the putting stuff up your ass that's gay. The bodybuilding stuff that has nothing to do. You could go on a gardening website and start telling people that you fist yourself. That's still gay, okay? Don't try to project and transfer the gayness of your actions onto the sport of bodybuilding. It's 100% on you. The justification of Bloho was that he didn't want prostate cancer. Again, does that sound like a man who's straight? Can you imagine if one of your buddies told you that? Like... For some reason, you learn that he likes to actually put all those up his ass, and then he tells you, oh, it's because I don't want cancer. Let me make it very clear. If you wouldn't rather die of prostate cancer rather than getting actually railed up the ass, then you are gay. I mean, it's don't pretend that it's medicinal, right? It's not a doctor that told you, oh, you, you're at risk for prostate cancer. Okay, well... Please squat on this massive purple dick as soon as possible, three times a day. Like, no, that's not something that people prescribe. It's something that you, Bloho, did because you are, again, deeply closeted. And the list of explanations goes on and on. Bloho said that as long as it's not with a man, it isn't gay. So in his word, again, you can be fucked in the ass as much as you want. As long as the person who doesn't do it is not a man, it ain't gay. If you agree with this, I'm sorry, but you are a complete degenerate. I know that it's not woke to say that, but it's, it's, isn't it obvious? I mean, the second something goes up your asshole that isn't a doctor going for a prostate shake or a suppository that your European grandma that hasn't understood that cough syrup exists yet has decided to ram up your ass, you are gay. Any other option is gay, or you can call yourself bi-curious, but in my matrix, it's 100% homosexual behavior. You cannot be straight and put stuff up your ass. Can we, can we write that somewhere? Can we make it a quote so that people stop trying to actually pretend? There is no shame in being gay. If you want to be fucked up the ass, that's by all means, it's your prerogative. But don't create a weird iteration of heterosexuality where you're heterosexual, but then every Tuesday and Thursdays, you blast your asshole with a dildo. It makes absolutely no sense. The list of excuses continues with, what if it's not modeled after a penis? What if there is no veins or head on it? We are to the point where this man, Jason Bloho, was so in love with his dildo that he, he was trying to find any way he could to explain to people that it wasn't really a dick. That it was just an ornament. Like, you, Bloho, you have something in your hand that is shaped like a penis. I don't care if there is no veins drawn on it. I don't care if there is no pre -cum on top. You put that stuff up your ass. Yeah, that's gay, buddy. It is gay. I don't care if you go to the store and buy a carrot and stuff it up your ass. You're not a turkey. You only have the aspect of it. You're not stuffing yourself. You are practicing homosexual sexuality. And it's perfectly fine, but just accept it. It's terrifying that he wouldn't accept it. You also have to keep in mind that this means that he most likely went to a sex store and asked the dude if he had dildos that didn't look like dicks. What level, what level of delusion is this? That you cannot accept your homosexuality to the point that you're going to try and find something to put up your ass that doesn't resemble a dick. The, the details with the veins and the head are particularly sordid but the one that really got me is the fact that, to him, the color of the dildo actually made all of the difference. So for him, if the dildo was purple or pink, then it didn't count. Because a dick cannot be purple or pink. 
If you think that's retarded, we're only getting started. But that's how stupid that guy was. That's the level of stupidity he was willing to go to to try to justify the fact he wasn't gay. Because he's not being fucked by a dick that looks like a human dick, that's fine. Well, of course, it isn't fine. It's really, really gay. But interestingly enough, Bloho was really hell-bent on precising that the dildo that he bought, again, to massage his prostate, wasn't black. And that was, that was very important. He insisted on this. And he said, that way, no one can say that I'm craving the BBC, aka the big black cock. Now, let's accept the hypothesis that a straight man can buy, willingly buy, a 12-inch dong, put it up his ass, and still be considered straight. Let's accept this. Even if we were to accept this, the second that guy says that because the dildo is not actually black, then it doesn't make him gay, and that this way no one can accuse him of craving black dicks, we can just go back on the hypothesis and say, okay, no, you're gay. Like, you're, you crave black dicks. Bro, that's what you crave. That's what you truly want in life. To the point, again, that you find strategies to not buy a dildo that resembles what you actually desire deep down. But it doesn't matter, because even though I hate having to visualize that, you most likely close your eyes when you go to town on yourself. So it doesn't truly really matter what color the dildo is. Plus, I think you don't even see it because it's underneath you. I don't know the logistics of this. I don't want to know. But it goes even deeper than that because it continues. Okay, The, the, the justification in the forum post continues. Bloho also told people who were telling him that, yes, yes, Jason, grabbing a dildo and shoving it up your asshole makes you gay. He tried to switch, that, to, to flip the script and say that if someone were to dress up as a bunny and have sex with someone, would that be, it wouldn't be considered bestiality. You're correct, Bloho. It would be considered being a furry, which is a gateway to bestiality. You're still a fucking degenerate. And the reason why he used that example is because he thought it was like a, logis, a, a logical counter-argument that was going to blow people's minds without realizing that, in truth, he was just revealing another one of his fetish. Because yes, Blow is a furry. The bear suit, the costume I described to you, yeah, that was a furry costume. It wasn't for a joke. The guy is actually a gay furry. Isn't that obvious? Doesn't that make a ton of sense to you? The reason why I say that is because, again, he used that as an argument in the forum post by saying that being a furry was just a fetish, just like putting dildos up your ass is just a fetish. But there is a certain story, a story that I personally believe to be a dead giveaway, and that is the story of the goat. Now, for the people who don't know, the story of the goat is a story that Bloho told on his channel a long time ago. And it was a story that was really only a joke, where it's an old story that we all know, where he pretended to be with a friend, and that friend was actually a Mark uh, Lobster Liner. And they saw a goat with its head stuck in a fence. And the joke is that Bloho dropped his pants and fucked the goat. At which point, Mark was looking at him and Bloho said, oh, you want some of it? And Mark said yes and got his head stuck in the fence. So first and foremost, again, pointing out the finger at someone and calling them a fag. So that's, again... Bloho's big method when he's actually having to discuss or argue with someone. But then again, why would he put himself in that position? Like, to make a joke about someone else, you're going to put yourself in the position in the shoes of someone who fucks goats? Like, what normally considered man would do that? Well, only one that doesn't really see a problem with it. I truly do think that bestiality in Bloho's domain here in his coconut is not something that he thinks is immoral or bad. Because again, keep in mind, we're talking about a guy that purchased a dildo and fucked himself with it for years and years and years. So he is not opposed to that. Why would he be opposed to something that he himself considers a fetish? Keep it in mind. And for anyone who has dogs and lives in Texas, if you see Bloho, run. Now, all of that is essentially Bloho justifying that he isn't gay, right? All of the excuses I just said which he ruins immediately because in one of the message posts, he also said that he would drink a gallon of horse cum if it would lend him a million dollars. Again, no one asked. Like, uninvited, unprompted, he shares that with people. What friend do you have does that? 
Like if I had a friend who told me that being a furry is just a fetish, told stories about him fucking goats, and then said that he would drink and guzzle down horse cum and semen, yeah, I would cut that guy down. That guy is fucking cats. That guy goes out at 3am with panties on his face and he looks for house cats to pin down and fuck. I'm fairly certain that there are a few cats with assholes deleted like this in Bloho's neighborhood. When he goes out to do some sled pushes or whatever, I don't think that's what he's up to at all. I think he's actually hunting for stray cats. When he has no goats available, of course. Which also is, in a sense, a blessing and a curse that Nova died because... From this, can we surmise that maybe he was actually fucking the dog? Imagine this. Imagine if actually Nova's death was due to Bloho fucking it to death. I don't want anyone telling me that he's not a piece of shit and that doesn't, he doesn't deserve it. He deserves it and more. So that's the tale of Bloho, the big gay furry. Something that everyone saw coming, of course. Again, no pun intended. And what did Bloho say to actually justify all of that? Well, the old deflection of, oh, it wasn't even me, I was just sharing the account. Again, what man would share a, a bodybuilding account for a forum on which he would share that type of stories? Do you have friends like this? Do you have friends where you share a Facebook account and you have all of your nannies and grandmas and friends on the account and once in a while you post something about liking being fucked up the ass? That's the behavior of someone who's a lunatic or someone who's deeply closeted and lying about it. I think that he was actually living his fantasy of being blasted in the ass on those forums, and he's trying to see if other men actually shared that fantasy because it made him feel better. So, Mr. Bodybuilding is G4P, gay for pay, and the second you flex a bicep, it's gay, you ram dildos up your ass. You fantasize about fucking animals. You do not have a leg to stay to point the finger at anyone and call them gay. All of that shit about strap and destiny, yeah, that projection, I think that you would have actually liked Alex to put a strap on and fuck you in the ass. Is it the reason why you called him that? I don't even want to know the type of stuff you would have done with Kino Body if he made the mistake of tripping in front of you and revealing his gorgeous moon. It would most likely have ended in a carnage. Thankfully, you are a midget, so you're not going to be able to manhandle anyone. That is the reason why you have to resort to cats. Now, that is pretty deep and that's actually pretty heavy. So, take a breather because we're going to continue we ain't done yet. That was all of the stuff about the dildos and about the projection and the forum post. Forum post which I have many more of and I'm going to be covering more in later installments. But here, I want to continue with a certain Facebook post that truly encapsulates the image of Blow on the internet. And that is the one where Bloho spoke about being captured by enemy soldiers, tortured and sodomized for 70 hour, 72 hours straight, at which point he managed to break out of the facility and kill all of the men with one kick to the solar plexus, of course. That post, when it was first revealed and first leaked back in the days, was massively popular and people actually believed it was from Bloho. It wasn't actually, it was a fake, but... What type of, of public image does one man have to have so that, so that when a, a message like this is published, again, being captured by enemy soldiers and sodomized for 72 hours, what type of man do you need to be in the public eye that people believe it? Right? It goes beyond lol cow. It truly is his image because it was believable back then and it's still believable now. But if we're going to go beyond the realm of the internet, there are other real-life proofs that Blow is actually a deeply closeted individual. And that is going to lead us directly to one of the juiciest men of the entire Blow Hovers. One that I haven't touched at all yet. One that I couldn't wait to reveal to you guys because I know for a fact that most of you have never heard of it. And that man is the Craigslist incident. But before I get into it, we're going to make a small detour to what I promised you, which is the juicy drama and the infighting be, uh, within the Blohovers. Let me check the time. Excellent. You guys are getting a long episode today. You deserve it and the topic is worth it. Now, I don't know if you guys knew it, but there was an actual anti-Bloho movement that was quite prevalent a few years ago. 
to the point that it reached a pretty massive presence on the internet and these guys had a ton of power and most of their actions and organization was centered and structured around the MISC. For the people who've heard of the MISC, it's pretty much an internet forum where people coordinated attacks against Bloho, they gathered information and they made everything in their power to make him as miserable as possible but also to actually expose him to the eyes of the public. Because even though now he's a complete joke and everyone knows that he's a degenerate, even though I still unveil things that apparently were left underneath the surface, back then he had credibility. Because for some fucked up reason, people looked at him and didn't immediately uh, tell that he was a complete sociopath and a liar. So these guys were hard at work. And we're talking like military level intervention here, where they had IP experts, that people working on hacking some of his accounts, of tracing back his presence on the internet, of gathering as much information as possible, of archiving everything. It was a serious effort. And I truly salute these guys because they are at the origins of this episodes. In fact, I'm just continuing the tradition of shitting on Bloho. They started it and they truly fucked him, even though it's something that he tends to enjoy, up the ass with a fervor that can only be ascribed as a sort of religious passion to the point that they themselves started to consider what they were doing as a crusade, which is going to lead to some juicy men's down the line because Bloho actually bought into that and thought that an actual religious order led by Muslim terrorists was at his door. Now, when it comes to the MISC, it did great work and it did a ton of damage and destroyed Bloho's career. They are the reason why Bloho couldn't go anywhere. They re-uploaded his shitty videos. They made, uh, they made videos making fun of him. They actually screenshotted all of the shit he said on forums. So they did the ground's work to reveal the truth to the world. But that was back then. Because with their efforts, Bloho died off and therefore their efforts also started to suffer because there was nothing else to do. And that is when a lot of infighting started. Usually what happens when you go after a single target is that once the target is acquired or it's starting to weaken, the members of the group start to turn on one another because they want something to do. And I can tell you that the high and the ex excitation that happened back then in the, the height of the blowovers and of, of, of blahatism and trying to get rid of the fat slug was so intense that when it died down, people couldn't cope. You know, it's like someone who sent to fight on military ground, something that Oppo Yemiwe knows a lot about, and then cracks under the PTSD because when the action dies down, their brain just cannot compute with it anymore. It was the same with the MISC. People started to fight with one another, some of which started YouTube channels, and there was a lot of discussions about people using Bloho to actually start channels and to get famous, etc., etc. Which is a shame because the goal was to destroy Bloho and he was still alive. The Roche was not dead yet. And a lot of people were seeing that and were not happy with the direction of the MISC. They saw that the infighting was just a stupid waste of time for ego's sake and that things were still, uh, still had to be done because Bloho was still breathing and drawing air. So, a certain character by the name of Cockfin intervened. And Cockfin decided that enough was enough. All of the trolling, all of the dislikes, that was nice and all, but it was time to put boots on the ground and to actually intervene physically. And he started to try and rally the MISC with him so that people from the MISC would actually show up at Bloho's door because they had figured out his address. And that created a massive rift between people within the MISC because some were actually directly opposed to that. Some did not want to become physical. They thought that it was fine to just stay trolling on the internet but the second it started becoming real, they recalled and they backed off. And as often with cowards, they pointed the finger at Cock Finn, saying that what he was doing was dangerous, it was irresponsible, he was going to put people in dangerous positions, yada yada yada. All of which Cock Finn ignored because he is a total fucking child. And so he went by himself to the location where Bloho lived, good old Texas, and he started to fuck with him directly. So what he did, and I do believe that some other people that I'm not going to name were involved, he started to put uh, actual pen plates with Bloho's face on it saying, have you seen this man? He fucks pigs and he's a, a terrorist and blah, 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 to actually make sure that he couldn't go out of his house. And that did a lot of damage to Bloho's life. He also started to fuck with him directly by knocking on his door and his master plan and truly the crown jewel of his achievement 
sending people to Bloho's door by putting, uh, putting what we call in annonce, by putting announcements on Craigslist. So the announcements were wide and varying in nature. Some of, sometimes he said that there were free puppies for sale or just to be given away if you went to Bloho's address. Or he would say that you could get a free fridge, meaning that there was an endless stream of people knocking on Bloho's door at all times of the day, which made him go completely insane because these people would show up at night. Now, you might tell me, NH, what type of person goes and knocks on someone's door at 3 a.m. off of Craigslist. I mean, you're not going to get a puppy in the middle of the night. Well, you're correct, but you see, Cockfin is a complete shithead, and I say that with all of love, because he figured out that if he put it a certain type of messages on Craigslist, he would attract a certain crowd to Bloho's door. And these messages were solicitations, meaning that he, he posed as a prostitute that was welcoming clients in his apartment, and that prostitute was Bloho. So people were queuing up at Bloho's door to get some of that sweet, sweet V, even though they didn't know that was what was awaiting beyond the door was a shittier, smaller, smellier version of Golem. Which means that even during the night, people were knocking. And from what I know of the announce, Cockfin pretended to be a transsexual uh, woman, I think, that, again, was welcoming clients. So, Bloho had to deal with that. And the way he handled it was to put a note on his door saying that he would actually reject people that knocked and that if you continued, he was actually going to take a gun and kill you, which he never did, truly showing how much of a coward he is. He never actually confronted anyone when this entire thing started. But this quickly just crushed and destroyed the mist because again, some people just left the movement outright because they said that it was unacceptable. And that is the reason why the mask started to slow down. The people that were opposed to Cockfin doxed him actually and left. And then some of the people that were after Bloho because they hated him and were okay with Cockfin's action just grew tired because Bloho was dead. He was dying and we see that today where his channel is almost dead. No one really goes after him anymore. But that also means that the MISC is in a state of complete stagnation because, well, the only people that remain there are people who never re-participated in active operations against Bloho. They're just content in making fun of him. But the problem is that, and this is where the drama comes in, I myself have tried to communicate with these people because I figured that back in the days they were after Bloho, so even after the Cockfin incident, they should still be gunning after the fat fuck. So, I actually reached out to some of these people and a lot of them reached out to me. Uh, a lot of the old guys from the mist that used to be there in 1617 reached out to me and they still help me and they give me sources here and there. But a lot of the time they told me to stay away from the mist, meaning that these were people who worked hand in hand with the mist who told me that now it was not a good idea to contact these people. And I didn't quite get why, because again, I thought in my head that anyone who's Bloho's enemy is also my enemy. So I tried to actually reach out to them. But then I quickly realized that they didn't like me. And they didn't like me for reasons that I still don't quite grasp. Meaning that there was accusations of me doing that for fame and money, even though these videos are not monetized. There were accusations of me being a fake natty, of me making up stuff, even though I don't really see what I would have to do any of that. I mean, there's enough shit on blow that I don't have to make up things. So that also led me to then observe the way they treated Cock Finn, because again, Cockfin is a hero in my book. He deserves all of the praises in the world. But these were people who doxxed him and kicked him out of their community. Why? Why would people who detest Bloho reject someone who fucked with him to the point that Bloho himself said on camera that if he ever gets any money, the first person he'll have killed is Cockfin. Bloho hates Cockfin more than he hates me. That is an achievement. It's an accomplishment. But he's detested by these people. And I think I figured out why. A lot of the guys that are still on the MISC are guys who never re-participated. They were never active. They were just there to make fun of him. And that's what they like. They like to have Bloho as their personal lore cow to make fun of for eternity. Because they themselves tend to not be the most well-off people. They tend to actually be very similar to him in aspect. Because, of course, 
these people are just like him, meaning that they don't really take care of their anonymity. So when they post on forums, well, they usually use either their real name or things that can allow you to trace back who they are because they post publicly on forums with their actual names and addresses. So I found out that most of these guys were people, men in their 20s and 30s, with no jobs, no families, no properties, etc., etc. And therefore, it didn't really make me want to work with them hand in hand because one, they were after me and tried to dox me also. There was a certain time where these people were going from channel to channel trying to gather information and dirt on me to use against me, so I don't see why I would work with them. And two, I also found out that they were not really doing anything, meaning that when I came up with all of the, the proof and the screenshots from Facebook to expose Bloho's behavior with women and his predatory behavior, these guys were completely flabbergasted, meaning that they had no idea of the existence of the Facebook group. How is this acceptable? I mean, the Facebook group is a public page. I mean, you can see it. To post in it, you have to be accepted within it. But it should be something that you know if you fuck with Bloho, that he's posting on that page. They didn't know. And so I think that all of the time, that envy created the negative pensions towards me, which I still don't get. I'm trying to work with these people, but they try to dox me and they don't actually like the fact that I go after Bloho. Because again, I think that they just don't want him to quit. They want, him, they want him to be preserved because it makes them feel better about their shitty lives to have someone worse off. But guys, if you're watching me right now from the misc, the remnants of the misc, you're roaches just like he is. Your life is not going anywhere and you are going to end up being him in 20 years, right? You are past versions of Bloho. You need to wake up now. If you're not interested in fucking with him, I understand it, but you cannot stop me from actually gunning after him. And as for the source and the screenshots, it's also the reason why I never shared them. It's because these guys do not deserve to have these sources. They should look up all of that stuff and they should actually get it by themselves. They should have the ability to do it. And I don't want to give them the, the, the pleasure of being able to put their eyes on these screenshots, which is something that really pisses them off, by the way, because they are used to getting the pick of the leader when it comes to stuff like this, because all of the men used to be dumped on the misc. And nowadays, they have almost nothing. It's bone dry. Well, it's going to continue that way. If you want the juicy men, you're going to have to watch my videos because it's the only way you'll be able to actually access them. So that's also the explanation as to why you will never get sources, right? I was nice enough last time to actually post the sources about the Facebook, uh, the Facebook messages of Bloho, which were immediately used to try to dox me. I should have actually listened to all of the people, the old heads from the mess, who told me to stay away from these people and to just work with them directly. I didn't listen. I tried to be nice and I won't do it anymore. So I think that the storytelling will remain the main di uh, distribution of men. So that was for the drama and for the entire misc thing. Now you understand better where this entire thing came from because they were at the origin of the anti bloho movement and they are now completely fallen from grace. But this also explains why Bloho thought that the people going after him were terrorists is because the people on the mist used to call themselves jihadis or they used to say that they worked for Israeli intelligence because it was fun. But since Bloho perused the website and the forum for information, he took it seriously. He really thought that people were Muslim terrorists that were trying to go after him. And he went in his delusion and par paranoia to the point that he thought that Lane Norton himself was a mufti, like he was a high-ranking Muslim, that was hiring, hiring all the Muslims to do his dirty work for him, which created the entire joke of Lane Norton having a payroll of jihadis that he would send after Bloho, which of course never happened. It was just random people. But when the entire Craigslist incident happened, Bloho was, again, hold in his apartment, thinking, seriously thinking, that people knocking on his door were terrorists, where they were just people looking for dogs, puppies, and also people looking for uh, some uh, trans transsexual sex. And that leads to something that connects back to the topic of homosexuality, because even though Bloho always refused to open the door, especially when Cockfin went to knock, keep in mind that Bloho hated Cockfin, but when Cockfin himself knocked on the door and called him out, he stayed inside, he refused to go outside because he's a little bitch. The only moment that Bloho actually went in outside is when he confirmed 100% that the people outside were no threat. And these people were actually two black men at night 
who showed up to Bloho's door because they thought they were going to get to have sex with a beautiful, lush, transsexual woman and ended up faced with a bald skinhead. And what ended up happening is that Bloho, emboldened by the fact that these two men were clearly not dangerous, took out a rifle, pointed it at the men, put them on the floor, on their knees, and forced them to release their passport and all of the information they had on him. So it's a video that was available, I'm sure that it's still on the internet. Bloho went out shirtless with a rifle, pointed at two innocent civilians that had no weapons. He verified beforehand to, I guess, act macho. So he refused to actually face the opposition of Cuck Finn. But then when it comes to two black men that he can abuse and bully, he has no problem with that. Well, that is what happened on that night. Luckily for him, what he did was illegal, but the two males refused to press charge because if they did, they would have to admit to the police and their family that they were out at 2 a.m. looking for a potential tranny pussy. So it did not happen. But that concludes this story that then allows me to also mention the fact that when asked to describe the two males, Bloho said that there were two fit young African males. If you were in a situation where you have to defend your life and two people knock on your door, you put them on the ground, one of them is shirtless, and then you have to make a description of the people, would you describe them in these terms? Two, two fit young men, African males, that's like a description of a black video. It, it, it's like cocked BBC pornography. To me, it's a reflection of his deep inner psyche and his actual desires, which correlates with the fact that he didn't want a black dildo. So he doesn't want a black dildo because it means that he craves the BBC, but he admires young African uh, men that knock on his door to fuck what they believe to be a trans woman. And that also points out to the closeted hatred and racism that is found within Bloho. I think that this is where it comes from. He openly hates against gay people because I think that he's closeted and, and, and himself gay. And I think that he hates black people openly also because I think that he's deeply attracted to them. It's only a theory, of course, this level of projection would be quite intense. But with the stuff I already presented, I think that it actually is something pretty solid. Keep in mind, he's also obsessed with guns. The, a gun which is a phallic imagery in a sense, it resembles a dick. And he also has this obsession with dildos that he owns and utilizes. He has a disappointed dad, a disappointed dad, by the way, that at some point he claimed beat him with a pipe, which if we're going to go full through the analysis and psychology, should also be a sign that there is some weird underlining sexuality with his dad. Why would you lie about your dad beating you with a pipe? Why a pipe? Why not his fist? Why would you pick an item that you can actually shove up your ass? It's really strange. He also himself, Bloho dated a linebacker because Moon Cookie, I'm sorry, might have been trans. She looked like a linebacker with a wig on. She had massive white shoulders. Every sign points out to her being more masculine than Bloho, which might be the reason why he loved her so much. And he himself has said multiple times that he loves big masculine men. All of the guys that he seems after, the Bugenhagens, the, 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 the Shaw, the Brian Shaw, all of those guys are huge giants with a lot of hair that look like bears. They look like the type of dudes that Bloch would actually love to be banged by. And all of that leads me to one conclusion and one conclusion only. Yes, Bloch is gay. It's 100% certain that he's closeted. But it goes beyond that because I think that I have managed to find the recipe for happiness. Bloch, I know that you're watching this and dry your tears because you need to have your full ability to concentrate on what I'm going to say. I'm going to give you the reason why your life sucks and I'm going to give you a way to fix it. Your life sucks because you're gay and it disappointed your dad because you were a fairy when you were young, which there's nothing wrong with, but you hid yourself in the closet and you started hating on gay people because you yourself are gay. You started to develop hatred towards African-Americans because you're attracted towards black men which is also perfectly acceptable. You bought a dildo and made sure it wasn't black, but you bought one that is the side of my arm again, so you clearly crave the BBC. You are also a disappointment to your dad, so in the long story and tales of Texan girls who date a black dude and the dad is disappointed and disown them, but they do it to get back to daddy. 
all of that truly points out to one thing and one thing only. Bloho, to fix your life, you need to get you a black boyfriend. You need to go out as soon as possible, find you some melanin, find you a black dude that is going to make you happy, that is going to pamper you and treat you like a woman, like you've always wanted. This is the cure. This is the way. You keep saying that getting a 700 pound deadlift is the way it's going to make you happy. It won't make you happy. All of your cuts and pokes won't make you happy. There is only one way you're going to be able to go. And that is not pretending you like women and bothering them on the internet or creating sock accounts. The true happiness in your case is the acceptation that you crave black dicks. And I'm going to end on these wise words. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.